the present-day representatives of the fairer sex scarcely lag behind their male counterparts, ardently pursuing equality. However, such was not always the case, a fact that only serves to accentuate the prominence of women who made their mark a century or two ago. Hence, today I wish to draw your attention to a particularly noteworthy figure, Edith Helen Vane Tempest Stewart. She stands as the first woman to be conferred the title of Knight of the Order of the British Empire in the military division. Let us delve into the treasures held within the coffers of this influential aristocrat. Edith was the daughter of the first Viscount Henry Chaplin and Lady Florence Sackville West. In 1899, she became the wife of Charles Vane Tempest Stewart, Viscount Castlereagh, who succeeded his father as the seventh Marquess of Londonderry in 1950. Thus, Edith became the proprietress of several grand estates, including Londonderry House in London, Mount Stewart in County Down, Wynyard Park in County Durham, Seaham Hall and Plas Machinleth in Wales. During their marital union, the couple was blessed with five children. Edith emerged as a highly influential figure in the interwar period. She fostered close friendships with Prime Minister Ramsay MacDonald and held the position of Chief Commander of the Women's Voluntary Reserve. The seventh Marchioness became the first woman appointed as Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire in the military division. However, let us now turn our attention back to her jewellery collection. The Londonderry Tiara, commissioned by the third Marquess from Garrard in 1854, incorporating existing family jewels, formed part of a larger parure. This ensemble included a magnificent diamond stomacher, a diamond riviere with a cross pendant, and a diamond bow brooch. The striking diamond tiara made its debut on Teresa, the sixth Marchioness of Londonderry, who adorned it in various configurations for a series of portraits in 1889 and 1891. Revered as one of society's foremost hostess's conservators, she earned the moniker Tiara Bandit while entertaining at Wynyard Park, Mount Stuart and Londonderry House in London. The Marchioness donned the diamond tiara when attired as Empress Maria Theresa of Austria at the iconic Devonshire House Ball in 1897, as well as at the coronation of King Edward VII in 1902 when Lady Londonderry dropped the tiara in the lavatory, only to be rescued by tongs. The seventh Marchioness of Londonderry also held court as a captivating society hostess, frequently sporting the diamond tiara while entertaining at Londonderry House in London during the 1920s and 30s, including for her portrait by Laszlo and a series of portraits captured in 1927, during which she also wore a turquoise parure. In 1937, the Marchioness of Londonderry graced the coronation of King George VI and Queen Elizabeth at Westminster Abbey wearing the tiara with a pearl parure and a magnificent diamond stomacher. Post-war, the Londonderry tiara adorned her at the state opening of Parliament in the House of Lords Chamber in 1948, as well as at the debutante ball at Londonderry House in 1952. Family fortunes shifted, and the current Marquess of Londonderry no longer holds familial estates, yet continues to possess family jewels, which for decades were on loan to the Victoria and Albert Museum in London, although they may be removed for wear. In 1821, the third Marchioness received 14 Siberian amethysts from the Russian Tsar Alexander I, who fell for her after viewing her portrait. The Marchioness managed to put an end to the romantic liaison, innocently, but the gifted gems remained in the family, notably worn by her during the coronation of King William IV. In 1916, the amethysts were crafted into a tiara for the seventh Marchioness although she preferred to wear them as corsage adornments, while the ninth Marchioness donned them as a necklace and bracelets. The Londonderry Amethysts are on permanent display at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London, though they remain in the family's possession. Another noteworthy piece in the Londonderry collection is the unique pearl parure, comprising several brooches, earrings and pendants, along with a necklace that can be transformed into a tiara when needed. This set was acquired by the third Marchioness in 1821 during an official visit to Vienna. Pieces from the Pearl Perure often complemented the attire of subsequent Marchionesses alongside the Londonderry Tiara. The Londonderry Turquoise Perure was purchased by the third Marchioness from Count Ferdinand Palfi, who had been collecting them throughout his life in Vienna in 1820. Notably, she wore pieces of the parure on her gown during the coronation of King William IV in 1830. 
The turquoise brooch was worn by the infamous 9th Marchioness in the 1960s, and the entire parure is exhibited at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. Another gift from the Russian Tsar. Alexander I to the third Marchioness, the Londonderry Emerald Parure, seems to have also been inherited by Lady Mary Berry, and her daughter, Baroness Saddle, wore it for a portrait. This suite is also displayed at the Victoria and Albert Museum. The emerald bracelet, belonging to the seventh Marchioness, was sold at auction. But let us return to the first Parure, which included the magnificent diamond stomacher crafted by Garrard in 1853 for Francis Anne, widow of the third Marquess of Londonderry, consisting of 230 carats of diamonds, the largest of which, 15 carats, was taken from the garter and sword of the legendary Viscount Castlereagh, worn at the coronation of George IV in 1821. The stomacher can be divided into three brooches. The dazzling diamond stomacher first graced Teresa, the sixth Marchioness of Londonderry, who wore it in various configurations for a series of portraits in 1889 and 1891, paired with the Londonderry tiara. Revered as one of society's leading hostesses, she earned the moniker Tiara Bandit, while entertaining at Wynyard Park, Mount Stuart, and Londonderry House in London. The Marchioness also adorned the diamond stomacher on her gown when attired as Austrian Empress Maria Theresa at the iconic Devonshire House Ball in 1897. The diamond stomacher was also paired with the Londonderry tiara and several other relics during the coronation of King Edward VII in 1902. The seventh Marchioness of Londonderry continued the tradition, frequently wearing the diamond stomacher while entertaining at Londonderry House in London during the 1920s and 30s, including for a series of portraits taken in 1927 when she also wore the Londonderry tiara and the turquoise parure. In 1937, the Marchioness of Londonderry wore the Londonderry Tiara, Pearl Perure, and Diamond Stomacher at the coronation of King George VI and Queen Elizabeth at Westminster Abbey. After the war, the Londonderry Diamond Stomacher was combined with the Londonderry Tiara for the state opening of Parliament in the House of Lords in 1948, which was conducted with full ceremonial pomp for the first time since the Second World War. In 1959, the year of her passing, the Marchioness of Londonderry lent the Diamond Stomacher and Londonderry Tiara for the Timeless Diamonds exhibition at Christie's auction. By the 1960s, fashion had evolved, and the ninth Marchioness of Londonderry wore the Diamond Stomacher as a magnificent diamond necklace for a portrait in 1967, paired with the Londonderry Amethysts worn as bracelets. Family fortunes shifted, and the current Marquess of Londonderry no longer holds familial estates, yet continues to possess family jewels, which have been on permanent loan to the Victoria and Albert Museum in London for decades. Which of the Marchioness of Londonderry's adornments impressed you the most? Share your thoughts. Also, let me know about whom else you would like to hear.